Okay, so now we're in part three of the ever never ending saga of favorite Pokemon in the world. This time Hoenn Edition. Yet again, just in case, I feel like it's necessary to explain. Rather than do a top ten of all of them, I'd rather do it region by region because I think it's more interesting that way. And this time we go over the Hoenn favorites, so top ten Hoenn, go. So Hoenn was one that I was really reluctant about and I didn't really care enough to get into or like at first. Like I really just was against it. But it did grow on me and I always liked how Honestly, all three starters are kind of okay. They're all pretty good. Like, I liked how bulky uh, Swampert was and its typing. I thought that was really good. I liked um, Blaziken, but I kind of hated it because people wouldn't shut the hell up about it. So that kind of ruined it for me. So I just left me with Sceptile. So I like Sceptile mostly because I like Rovile and I like the idea of Leaf Blade. I think it's a great attack. Sceptile would be the one that I would choose for my journey through the Hoenn region. I like the idea of having the grass because Hoenn was 90% water. So it felt really, really useful. And because I would rather have different and better Pokemon for fire and water types. That has nothing to do with Sceptile, but the point is I like Sceptile. I think its design is half and half. I don't really like the warts on its back, but I like... I like Leaf Blade. I like it's just... I don't know. There's something about it that kind of gets me. This is one of those bird Pokemon that when it came out, you were like, yes, this is perfect. This is this is a bird. And like, I never really got that feeling with Pidgey or Pidgeot or anything like that. But with Swellow, it kind of worked because like seeing it just looked so natural and so right. And the way it was portrayed and like the way it would faint and everything. It just felt so real and so right and so good. So yes, I like Swellow. I think it's a good Pokemon. Um, the one I did use for the playthrough didn't exactly turn out too well, so I do need to rebreed it and try and make Swellow into something useful. Because admittedly, it's not all that great in terms... It's, it's one of those that's good for speed and nothing else, and that's pretty much the extent of it. But I know there's ways to make Swellow good, and I'm going to figure it out. Alright, so this one I think is cool in just like... Firstly, its design is very interesting, so when I first saw it, I never would have guessed it as a steel type, which I think is pretty cool. Next, I like the idea that I came up with the nickname Claptrap for it. I think that's really cool. Nice little Donkey Kong nod. It just fits with the design and the, the character of the Pokemon. I like it. I liked it when I would go through XD and it would help me catch the rest of the shadows. I like Claptrap. I like it better that they turned it into a fairy and gave it a Mega Evolution because that actually makes him useful. Because admittedly, he's not the strongest, he's not the most defensive or anything of a sort. He's actually pretty weak for just a Steel-type Pokemon. But that Mega Evolution changed everything, and a single play rough will knock out a fair amount of your stuff if it's raised the right way. So yes, they turned Claptrap, they turned Mawile around and made it pretty useful. Just prior to may not have been the best, but it still looked cool at the very least. Yet again, this is one of those where I've always liked it, but I've never been sure why. Now, admittedly, because I was like dis uh, like retarded and can't read, I didn't know his name was Kyogre, so I thought it was Kyrogue. And I was like, wow, that sounds super badass, but maybe I was just thinking too similarly to Tyrogue. I don't know. But I like Kyogre. I think it's a cool Pokemon. Design-wise, I think it looks interesting. I like the drizzle. But at the same time, it's actually kind of counterproductive considering the idea that it just ups your chance of thunder hitting you. But it's still good. It's still strong. I use it for my Rain Dance team as Omega Alpha Kyogre. That's the one. So yes, I use it. I think it's good. I think it's strong. I think it looks cool. Uh, I like its cry. Between the two, I always thought it was better than Groudon, but at the same time, Groudon technically has more of a strategic advantage to it. But regardless, I don't care. I like Kyogre. Bite me. Now this one to me feels kind of considerable and comparable to Nido King, where it's another one of those where it's like, I never would have thought of it as one of my favorites, but it is one that I really like. So, but of all the stuff in Hoenn that I feel would have been suitable for a ground type, this would have been it, and it's not even a ground type. It's strong and it's super bulky. The downside is that special defense is pretty low and it's kind of slow. But that never really held me back because I never put it in any sort of dangerous situations. So it always seemed that it always worked out really well, and I just I liked it. I like its design. I think it's pretty cool. Um, 
I don't like how long it takes to level it up, but I like its evolutionary line. That's pretty cool. I like how it goes from a little runt into like a looks like a dinosaur and then looks into a beast. So yeah, I always thought it was cool. I liked it. Just, you know, a single surf kind of wipes him out. Now this one's probably no surprise because I bet you a lot of people like this. And that's uh, Milotic, Melodic, whatever you want to call it. Um, really pretty Pokemon, very cool sounding, and it's kind of like a Gyarados counterpart. But I feel like in comparison, it's not really quite Gyarados. Gyarados had an attack stat, like, um, his would be like 150, as to where Melodic is like 130. So technically it's more defensive, because its defense is like 160. And we're talking at level 50, not base, because I don't know base stats, so fuck that noise. But like, it, it's good, and it's cool, and it's like a nice trophy, but at the same time it's just kind of not all the way there, if that makes sense. Like, I like it, it's great, but it just, it's a tiny bit short, could be better, but hey man, we can all find a way to make it work. Moveset wise, it's fantastic, and it just looks cool, and it's got a cool cry, so there you go. Alright, so this one's probably going to seem really, really weird, but I want to explain this in depth. So, firstly, I like Duskull. Secondly, I like Duskull's cry. I like the idea of it being like a little pig ghost kind of thing. I think that's super cool. Next, I like the faceplate mask kind of look it has. Next, I like the idea that it has a single eye shifting back and forth between two holes. I think that is the coolest fucking thing. I think it's way cooler than Dusclops and uh, Disknoir, I think it is. So that kind of sucks, because I just, I feel like when it evolves, it just stops looking cool. And I get the idea of, it's like, yeah, it's a Cyclops. But I think the idea of just one eye shifting back and forth to see what's going on is so much more interesting and so much more creepy. I love it. I think it's great. But yes, I like it. It's just, it's so interesting to look at. It's so interesting to think about how they conceptualized that. I like it. I admire it. I think it's really, really cool. And I'm happy. It makes me happy. Here's another one that I think is really, really cool because of the idea of just how it was conceptualized, and that's Shedinja. When I first heard and saw about it, I was like, oh, that's really gross. Because, let's be real, it is. And that's exactly why it's cool. So, they thought about what would happen when, like, something sheds its skin, and then they're like, well, let's turn that into a Pokemon. Let's, let's make this real. So that right there, that's kind of creepy and gross. It's also cool that it's a um, ghost type, and it's cool that the idea of, like, well, if you stare into your, its back, it'll eat your soul, or whatever. That's creepy and cool. I like the halo above its head that symbolizes the idea that it's dead. I like the idea that they also thought, what happens if we give a Pokemon 1 HP and nothing else? And then they came up with the Wonder Guard ability, which also made it really, really cool, because it's like, hey, nothing can hurt me unless it's super effective. And I like that. I think it's really good. I think it's one of the most interesting experimental choices they've made, and I like it. It's another case of where they're playing with the tools that they're given. In this case, the tools would be the abilities. So when they thought of like how we can, we can have an ability to make a new and interesting concept with this Pokemon, it worked. It's great. So I like when they introduce something new, and then they play with what they can do with it, and then they turn out with something super successful. So yes, I think Shedinja is pretty cool. So again, at the time, I didn't really like Hoenn so much, but I remember when I was playing Colosseum when we were going through the Under. It's very vivid. Um, one of the people can send out a Gorbis, and firstly, I think that name's really, really cool. Next is the idea of like hearing it and seeing it. The first thing I said was, wow. And I was like, yeah, I like that one. That's cool. That's a cool Pokemon. I like that one. That's good. I want that. The problem is it's kind of a bitch to obtain, so technically it's not really something you can use on just a playthrough or a standard team unless you have friends or connections or some sort of way of obtaining it on your own, which is kind of sucky, but I think it's a cool Pokemon. I like it. It's very bulky. It's very strong. It's it's kind of like a weird tie-off because it's got, like, mine has 120 defense, special defense, and health, so it's like, I don't know if that's good or bad. It's like Rotom, essentially. And then it's got a pretty good special attack, but it's pretty slow. But I don't know, I just think it's super cool and interesting, and yeah, I like it. It's cool. Now this one sucks because technically I cannot capture the greatness in um, the way it should be captured. Because every time I try and record it, it just doesn't quite work out. But my favorite um, one in Hoenn 
which kind of made me like it a little bit more, was Metang. Mostly for the animation it does when you hit it. Like, you can't see... <laughs> you can't see it. But it's actually spinning around really, really fast, and then afterwards it's like, whoa! And then it gets right back into it. And I think that's hilarious. I like it. I also just like Metang as a Pokemon because it's super strong, super durable, it's a nice typing of Steel and Psychic. I like the evolution line between it where it just starts as an arm and then it forms into a body and then it forms into like a spider kind of thing. Like it's a cool evolution line that's like, it's really simple in concept. It just doubles itself up each time and it's it's super cool. Uh, it'd be kind of hard to raise. I, it's shiny form is pretty cool too. Kind of bummed I missed out on that mystery gift event from Omega. I think I missed it by like maybe a few days just because I wasn't aware it existed. But yes, I think it's really cool. I remember when I first saw it, I just, I laughed because I was like, alright, that's funny, that's good. I like it. Coliseum effectively kind of made me start liking it because of things like animations! Fainting animations, battle animations, that's stuff that people complain about for some reason because they're stupid. Like, without that, I probably wouldn't like nearly as much of the stuff I do, but I do because of it. Metang is one of my favorites because of it. Metang would be in the top 10, I would say. I like Metang that much. I think it's a cool Pokemon. So that was it as far as our trip through Hoenn. Now, as of this point, <laughs> this is probably going to be the gap for the series until I can figure something out. Because I do not have 3DS capture. I can maybe emulate a DS and then maybe get some footage of Gen 4 or 5, but that's about it. Unless I can find someone who's like, here man, use my footage, then I can't do anything, or I can just steal it and then hope no one notices because I'm a nobody on YouTube, so maybe there's that. But it's really hard to get footage of specific certain things like that, unless I record it myself, which is more of the problem here. But yes, as of this point, this is probably going to be the end of it until I can figure something out and maybe get the other few generations in. So... That's Hoenn. These are the first three generations. When the saga continues, you will know, because I will probably do them in bulk like I am now. But yes, top 10 Pokemon, JC4R.